Hey everybody, happy Thursday. Welcome to 3D Hangouts with myself, Noah Ruiz, and Pedro, my brother. Hey guys, how's everybody doing on this beautiful Thursday, 29th, 2015? Yeah. We're here for three hangouts. That's right. This is the show where we combine DIY electronics with 3D printing to make uh, some pretty cool projects for you guys. Hopefully inspires people and helps you with uh, all sorts of little tips and tricks and things. That's right. We cover news, CAD techniques. Uh, let's go ahead and check out the segment that we have for today's show. All righty. We always start off the show with a couple segments for you. We'll start off with what are you prototyping? That's right. So we take a look at a sneak peek behind the, the scenes at what we're working on for future projects. That's right. And then we'll take a look at some 3D news, some external news, scary the nets and, uh, and That's right. There's stuff. always some interesting things going on in the world of 3D printing. That's right. Then we got a weekly video for you guys. It's a really fun one today. We'll talk more about that. And then we'll segue into a layer by layer. Where we'll give you some CAD techniques on the project. So yeah, let's get started with our first segment. Prototyping segment. You know what? Over the weekend, we got uh, some new printers. Got some new printers for you guys. That's right. We got the Printbot Plus and the Lulzbot Mini. Oops. Oops. Wrong, wrong one. one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah Give so me a can second. Can there, 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 we go. there we go in the background. We got the awesome bigger Printerbot Metal Plus and the Lulzbot Mini, the smaller counterpart to the TAS4. Yeah, very cool. So we're coming up with some pretty good tests so far. We have um, the Printbot Plus that's currently printing a pretty big print. And it, behind me, in a couple sizes, we're just going to tear off this uh, Oh, you want to do that? Too. OK, yeah, we'll do we that first. And we can switch over to the overhead. We can show you some of the quality. Which one first? You want the overhead first? Yeah. Let's do it. We're going to show you some parts that we've been printing with this. We've been printing nonstop with the uh, the Lulzbot and the Printerbot Plus. And so let's first just up, take a look Lulzbot here. Lulzbot Mini. Yeah. So the Lulzbot Mini is a pretty straightforward machine to set up and initialize. Um, a custom version of Cura. They have quite a few different profiles that you can check out as well, and also some slicer profiles as well. And uh, this is this week's project we printed out. It's a uh, Raspberry Pi, mobile Raspberry Pi enclosure. So we're printing out in two different materials and really trying to get um, trying to get a good tool path generated so that we can get the most finest quality with these type of parts. And if you ever printed um, enclosures, they they can be kind of difficult uh, to print out, especially when you want um, very nice quality and some really strong standoffs that are uh, pre-tapped. Yeah, unfortunately, it looks like a lot of the um, default profiles that a lot of people are testing, usually printing like a squirrel or an octopus. Uh, something with a lot of z-height, maybe a statue or something, would print yeah. really well. But uh, when you're printing enclosures that are you know, hollow and, and, and uh, thin, um, you really want to uh, understand your G-code. Yeah, you can run into some retraction issues. And that's some things that uh, some of the manufacturers should really look into. So yeah, and this is, of course, the Printerbot Plus. It this is a big part, man. This yeah. is 230 mil by about 150 mil millimeters. Max, yeah, so the max bed on the Printerbot Plus is 250 by 250 by 250. So rather large build plate. And let's go ahead and check out the quality of the iPad 2 uh, that just finished printing okay. over here. I'll go ahead and switch over so you guys can take a look. All right, quick and painless easy removal. <laughs> Pretty nice. All right, you it's want the, the leveling on this? Check out the uh, overhead right there. This is pretty fantastic there. Wow. So usual song and dance that you have to do with the Printerbot Plus, like you did with the uh, Metal Simple, which is just physically adjusting the Z probe height, and then doing your twenty-eight uh, G twenty-eight G twenty-nine commands to sort of level that out. Right on. And some other cool retraction um, tests that we were doing on the Lulzbot Mini. This is rather a complicated. Print. Um, it's a like helix, helix. Yeah. little pencil holder that you designed inside of Maya using yeah. some linear deformers. Yeah, this is mainly just a test, right? To just, like you're saying, retraction settings and quality and see height. And this is like literally hundreds of, 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 of uh, you know, retraction. Uh, every little um, sort of movement is, it has like retraction on it. So it looks phenomenal. I printed this with quite a bit of our other printers, and uh, they don't fare too well, but the, uh, the menu seems to do really, really great. Yeah, and it's very strong too. I'm yeah. to test you that. We'll upload these if yeah, you want to test out some of your retraction settings on some of your printer. So we'll be having a review, right, Pedro? Yep, working on the review as we speak. It's in the timeline right now, actually. So Yeah, we want to, of course, print more and, and spend some more time with it until we do a full long review. When we did the Orion, you know, we took a lot of time on that one, and we'll be sure to, uh, to do the same. So that's our prototype segment. Let's go ahead and take a look at some news. We'll have some news. So, um, 
Now, what's going on in the world of 3D printing this week? Yeah, give me a second to uh, skip that one and go right into our first new segment. So, Mr. James Bruton from X Robots YouTube channel. Every week, James has uh, several updates to his projects, and one of the, this week's project that he's uh, updating is the Alien Xenomorph, uh, scrap metal inspired um, suit, full body suit. Uh, in this update, he is uh, working on the tail. So he's using um, Ninja Flex and ABS uh, to make a half rigid, half um, flexible structures. And here he's, he's figuring out the mechanics and the animatronics uh, for the tail. So it's really fun to watch him and um, see how he updates and how he's uh, kind of figuring everything out as he goes. Really cool, inspirational um, projects from James. And he always goes over CAD and cool things like that. I'm Definitely wondering. the money shot there when you Are see we? the tail twitch yeah. come to life. Can you see the tail twitch again? Yeah. I wish I had it queued up a little bit better. But yeah, we, you know, check, check out James Bruton if you haven't already and subscribe to his channel on X Robots. Get some cool updates there. Definitely an inspiration for doing a lot of the three D printed wearables and Cosplay. really bringing these things yeah. to life. Very cool. Shout out to you, Mister James Bruton. All right, in the next story, um, we're checking out some uh, some cool uh, cool things that are being shared on the Google Plus community, the three D printing community, and this is from a gentleman named Sergey who's just sort of sharing his uh, his very cool looking uh, articulating robot spider. I guess it's really cool. Uh, he designed it in 3D uh, Studio Max, and I believe he printed it on Ultimaker. Yes. So very cool to see um, people with a background in, in digital effects um, sort of going into maybe uh, manufacturing toys or something like that. Yeah, that seems to be the demographic of all the newcomers coming into 3D printing. It seems to be visual effects, 3D modeling, people in, you know, did video games and things like that, which is pretty much our background. Yeah. Happy to see that you know, they're able to take all those tools that they, you know, Sort of Matt took all those years of master yeah. sort of bring them, you know, all those physical objects now to life. Yeah. Very so cool. Very cool articulating little um, spider here. If you want more details, check out the blog. You can find out more there on the story. And then next up, we got a cool project. Very, very cool project. Reminds me of a lot of the Enable projects. This is by Gyrobot. This is a remix of the Flexi Hand. So this is um, this is a prosthetic arm that is um, printed and, and optimized for printing in TPE material, so like Ninja Flex type material. So here he's printed it in a sort of a peachy flesh tone color. And uh, I'm just kind of showing the flexibility, flexibility and of course, of um, sure that the uh, the tips of the fingers are, have a little bit of grip on them, yeah. which is the characteristic of the uh, Ninja Flex. And today, Ninja Flex actually announced uh, three different uh, flesh tone colors. Mm -hmm. I think it was uh, car caramel, um, amber, and yeah. Flesh. We don't have uh, photos of them yet, but we do. Uh, we will bring you guys some more info when that happens. And we even printed out um, a model of a of a, of a yeah. hand there, and it looks really detailed. You can see some of the veins there. Yeah. Really, really detailed. So very, very cool project. Shout out to you, Mr. Jarvat. It's on Thingiverse. Mm -hmm. You can download it too. Even though I read that the kids really like the, the bright colors, the yeah, I know, reds right? and oranges. Really that, yeah. But of course, you know, <laughs> kids aren't the only ones who uh, right. may have uh, NPT problems. So yeah, definitely dynamic. for the adults here. Very cool. Check that out on the Thingiverse and on the blog. We have all the links for you there if you're interested in that. And so, similarly, um, but a little bit differently, uh, this gentleman came up with uh, what he calls the Glove One, which is a wearable uh, cell phone. It, <laughs> it's a wearable cell phone. It's um, it's pretty much like a like a Iron Man type glove. It's got integrated uh, tactile buttons. It has um, circuits to make uh, phone calls. <laughs> so here he is, uh, sort of testing it and calling himself on the phone there. Uh, but it's a really cool project because he uh, he released all his uh, source files, all his instructions on an instructable, and uh, he really wants people to uh, check it out and try it out for themselves. And really cool to uh, to document it so heavily and and uh, offer your CAD files too, which is really awesome. Definitely one of those projects where it uh, sort of challenges you to modify it because you have to definitely adjust it to your uh, hand. Right. Everybody has a different you know sizes for that. Yeah, and pretty cool electronics going on in there. Yep, and in the next story, we have uh, some cool improvements to dual extrusion. Pedro, do you want to take this one? Yeah, so a lot of people are familiar with the dual extrusion little workarounds that um, Slicer, Cura, um, even Makeaware have, where they'll just make a, you know, a wall that's as tall as the print, 
um, sort of to wipe off the other nozzle that has the access um, filament as it's printing, you know, the other one. So what this does is uh, it gives a little G-code algorithm that you can adjust for your printer. And what it uh, essentially does is uh, do a more optimized wipe of the uh, second extruder while it's not printing. You can see here in the video when it loads up, um, which looks kind good? of like a mess, but it's actually doing a phenomenal job when it gets over to the print. You can see just how clean the uh, prints are coming out compared to Makerware or Slicer. If you advance a little bit on oh, yeah, forward, sure. you can see the quality that we're getting out of these. Tell me when. So um, that big sort of uh, gloopy mess is sort of the, that's where I want to throw away the stuff I don't mm -hmm. want. So that's, so it's kind of handling the oozing for you, right? It's like, let's, yeah. let's group it up for you and keep it out of the way. So, so the optimization the that's going on here is it's not generating such a tall wall, you know, with all, we you know, wasting all this material. Mm -hmm. And here you can see the uh, sample examples of a uh, very clean look that you're getting out of uh, dual printing with this method. Very cool. The G code is available on, I think, is YouTube. And the only thing you need to really adjust is the offset between your two extruders. Oh, wow. Very cool little thing that. Um, so you can implement this Younger. today. Like, yes. You can start using this today. Check it out. It's on the blog. There's links and everything there uh, to check this out. Very we awesome. Cool. See the community coming yeah. up with some very cool algorithms to fix. Um, some awesome. more common problems in uh, dual Yeah, we'll have extrusion. to definitely check a look again at dual extrusion. Yeah. We'll keep trying with it. OK, cool. Uh, next news piece, uh, we just wanted to plug uh, Thingiverse. Uh, they have a new groups system, and we already have quite a few members. Thank you guys for joining. If you want to feature, if you want us to feature your projects here on the show, this is the place to do it. We're going to start uh, featuring your guys' stuff, so we'll, you know, in the coming weeks, We'll start collecting uh, some projects and sharing them with you guys that you think we should check out. You can do that by clicking on the Things uh, tab and then just clicking on Add Post a Thing right there, the little blue uh, button. And if you want to just sort of, like if you're working on a project that maybe isn't finished, you want some help on it, or just some, some comments and things, uh, post it up on the Topics uh, page, and that's where we can uh, have a discussion about it, and other members can can help as well. So yeah, every check that out. Yeah, every morning we scour through Thingiverse uploads, and this will definitely make it easier for anybody who wants to have their work featured on the show. Yeah, specifically, you know, stuff with uh, DIY electronics. Yeah, very cool. Let's see the next one. Next one. This is a cool sort of the STL show and tell stuff, right? So right. this was uh, on Thingiverse. This is uh, Frankenstein's uh, light switch. Yeah, this is a very cool like mod for your house, um, which is pretty much how we got started in 3D printing yeah. around the house. You Easy stuff, can yeah. Adjust, upgrade, fix, and this is definitely um, one of the easier ones that you can just get into sort of uh, home customization. Which yeah. is really cool. Yeah. Perfect for Halloween theming out your house, or just being cool, huh? Yeah, like for your right. mad lab science laboratory thing. Yeah, you still can request to actually make a dual it's and a dual one, I think. Uh, three um, outlet one. Yeah, that one's work being worked on. There's three one. <laughs> Definitely very cool. cool. Check it out. It's uh, available on Thingiverse. You can download it now. All right. Next up, there was a little bit of wearable news. Uh, Leatherman came out with a uh, pretty cool wearable. Yeah, a little tool wearable. Yeah, it's like it wasn't little... too long for someone to go. You know what? I can design that and make that in like five minutes. Yeah, this is the beauty of 3D printing and you know design in general, where you can just go ahead and remake something that you see you know on TV, where you're thinking you know this isn't too tough to make. And of course, he went out and mid did it in like a day or so. It seems like yeah, and it's it's very like you you can still buy the uh, the written you know the one. It's almost like you know testing. Do I do I actually want this? And you can mm -hmm. test it yourself first before you actually get I the personally the want metal something on. like this. I always find myself need to yeah, you know, open really up cool. a box or Rebel quickly tools, yeah, so cool. you know, change the plate on a camera or something like that. Yeah. So. This is definitely a useful 3D print right here. Very cool. Wearable nonetheless. Yeah, and it's on Thingiverse. You can download it right now. Mm -hmm. And uh, check it out. It's also on the blog if you want the link. Check out adafruit.com slash blog. All right, that's the news segment. I All think right. we want to jump into uh, this one jump oh. into the project, maybe? Before we do that, go ahead and let everybody know what the coupon code is uh, this week. You. I don't yeah. think we've if mentioned you, it at all. Yeah. If you would like uh, to purchase some 3D printing goods or some DOI electronics, we got a Coupon code for you guys. If you enter in touch pie into the checkout, you will get 10% off your order. It uh, expires tonight at 1159, so it's good for a day. And yeah, that doesn't work on the software or any of the um, certificates that we have. Right on. Everything else should be good. Yeah. Cool. 
All right, let's jump into this week's project, which is, of course, a touch pie. Yeah, it is a touch pie. Now, what is a touch pie? I don't know. We've done quite a bit of uh, Raspberry, Ty uh, Raspberry Pi projects. And this one, you know, we just want to make a really simple one. This is a, let's, the, the idea was let's make a, a touch screen Raspberry Pi that's portable, that's not tethered, that's completely a standalone unit. So we figured we'd make it with our very large 3.5 inch Pi TFT. This one's really cool because, uh, or all the Pi TFTs are really cool because they're like Pi hats. You snap right on top, optimized for the Raspberry Pi. And we got three different sizes for you guys in the Adafruit shop. We have a 2.2, 2.8, and a 3.5 inches, which we'll be using in this, uh, this project. Um, we've used the 2.8 quite a bit, like in our Mac Mini, our Mac Pi project and our DIY Game Boy, which is really cool. But this one, it's using, this is our first project really using the 3.5 inch TOT, which is pretty large. And it seems to work really well. You can get all the parts, of course, at adafruit.com. We also have some tools for you guys uh, in the shop, too. You'll need some tools, of course, to build this one. You also need some wire, some silica, um, excuse me, the, some heat shrink tubing, and, of course, some solder. Uh, we put together a design for you guys um, so you can modify it if you'd like. If, you can, uh, if you'd like to make it uh, something else, you totally can. We, we prototype it on just about all of our printers, so the PrinterBot, the Orion, all the Lowell's bots. They print really well because uh, it's at 150 um, millimeters across, so um, it'll, it'll print on most printers. Uh, the real cool kind of uh, highlight of this project is, can, can you adjust yep. that, please? Yep. Thank you. We have uh, PowerBoost 500C, which is a charging circuit. It regulates um, your power so that you can have five volts of, uh, of power to power the Raspberry Pi and other gadgets. And it also has an onboard charging circuit, so you can recharge lithium polymer batteries or micro you. And for this project, we'll start off with cutting up some wires, tinning the edges here, the, the tips. And then we're going to solder it up to um, a slide switch, which will mount it to or secure it to a panelized tuner, which is really nice uh, when you're soldering your components. And with that, we can solder up uh, the, three, um, the three wires to the bat, the enable, and ground pins. We'll also need two jumper wires for the negative and the positive pins. Very nice. That's pretty much our power circuit there. And to fit everything into the enclosure, it's pretty simple. We're, uh, we're mounting uh, the PowerBoost 500C uh, to the side there with a single machine screw. And the cool thing about the, the, uh, the, the Pi TFT, the 3.5 inch one, is it has these mounting tabs on the sides. And it's really great um, for, uh, for fastening into, uh, into enclosures and panel mounting it. Here we're panel mounting to the back. And then we're plugging in uh, the jumper cables into uh, GPIO number two and number six for the power. And then the slide switch just kind of gets routed through the back there and just held in place. Now, uh, we're using a pretty, uh, pretty beefy lithium polymer battery. It's a 2,500 milliamp battery, which would give you about 8 to 10 hours, give or take. Um, but we're, we're adding gaffer's tape on top to give it a, a little bit of uh, extra protection there. And it, it plugs in via uh, the JST connector. And we're just going to rest it uh, in between the, uh, the Raspberry Pi and the Pi TFT. Uh, definitely a good idea to. Uh, Fasten your screws into your enclosure before uh, you know fitting in your component. That way, uh, you can line up all the all the standoffs correctly and just kind of fasten it in place. Everything, all the tolerances and things are really nice in this in this model. And then to put it all together, you just snap the two uh, two pieces together, and we'll finish it off by fastening four more screws into the recessed standoff so that they fasten the two parts together. So. Uh, this is a really cool project. Um, we have heavily documented on the Adafruit learning system. So if you want to build one yourself, we have every uh, step, uh, photos, assembly, circuit diagrams, all the good stuff there. All the and images we, you need to get yeah, everything running. And we also have an, a nice image, a distro for, for the Raspberry Pi. So, yeah, so one can, of the top uh, use cases that we're having for this little project is a monitor for R3 printers. Yeah, it's a really great project for monitoring your 3D printer or hosting it. You don't have to have it uh, wireless. You can plug it into the wall, and you can have it just on always. And then you can access your printer and control it through that little interface there, which is really nice. Yeah, yeah. the battery can act uh, sort of like a backup if uh, you yeah, live in an area yeah. where your power is constantly going on, mm -hmm. on and off. You know, all of our printers hooked up the battery uh, backup units. So in case power goes off, you know, lose a whole print. You definitely don't want to um, have the power go off on the little monitor here. Yeah. Do you want to take a quick look at the overhead so you see it in, in person? Yeah, so here's the tiny little guy. And we've already gotten a couple requests to update it to do a, um, for it to handle a Raspberry um, a B plus model. So I think that is what we're going to show in our layer by layer, right? Uh, yeah, let's take a look at uh, sort of how we would go and approach that, which is straightforward. 
I won't spend too much time on it, but yeah. So uh, we have all the design files available for you guys. You can download it and use 123D Design, or you can uh, you can export it out as a, as a step file and import it into maybe SolidWorks or Inventor, or one of your favorite CAD apps. But uh, it's um, this is the file. It's all all the original solids are there, so every little piece is modifiable and editable, and nothing's been booleaned yet. So this is pretty much all the pieces that make the uh, the project together. So we'll start off by just sort of uh, talking about the components. This is um, this sort of represents the the the, the Pi TFT 3.5 inch screen. We also have the cutouts for you there available, and then right underneath that is the battery. Right underneath that, we have the, the Raspberry Pi A Plus model. So that's there. And then we have all the standoffs for you as well, the little uh, recessed standoffs that make the two uh, pieces um, kind of close fit together. But if you didn't want, maybe you want it uh, like a friction snap fit, you can get rid of those and make it uh, even thinner and smaller. Mm -hmm. We also have uh, the PowerBoost 500C, which is actually pretty interesting the way it's mounted. It's mounted to the side. which Typically, you don't do that. You have it like flat, flush on the floor. Yeah, but I think it's one of the first projects you mounted, yeah. did a side mount on this. Exactly. So um, I only needed one, uh, one uh, machine screw to fasten into place. I have four there, but uh, I only ended up needing one, which is pretty cool. I think you ended up using uh, one of the nubs just to balance out the other side. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And, that's a little and tip so, there. if you wanted to get this in your, uh, if you wanted to get this updated to the Raspberry Pi A Plus, what we could do is you could download, you could download our um, our component for the Raspberry Pi B Plus. We have that available for you guys on the, on our one two three D gallery page. We have a link for you. Um, in, in, the the, in the learning guide, that's right. And all you really have to do is go up here to insert, at least to get it in there. And we'll hit browse, and then we'll just import our Raspberry Pi B plus um, component here. And that's where it is. It gets imported there. You have to do a little bit of movement and finessing to get it in the right orientation. But uh, you'd be happy to know that uh, you can totally customize it and uh, make it yours. And that's what uh, we strive to do here. I think I've probably crashed uh, one two three, which is, you know, if you've ever used uh, mo modeling apps, they, they tend to crash quite a bit, yeah, especially with so many objects in there. Yeah, it's not really that many objects. I think I'm just having it oh, quite yeah, a having, bit yeah. with the uh, Cam yeah, Twist yeah, yeah. and you know other apps in the background. So we'll have to revisit that. But I definitely encourage you guys to check out uh, today's layer by layer, which is already on uh, YouTube. You can check that out. And I think we also have actually in one of our last projects how to edit a uh, Raspberry Pi Model B yeah. plus case into an A. So you can just look at that and sort of <laughs> work yourself, you know, work work it backwards. On no, it, it's pretty much just, on just you know delete the the old uh, component and import the new one and just fit it into place. Extend um, by things, like fifty yeah. millimeters out. And oh, that's, no, actually the case is already pretty much modified for the B plus. If you look in the back here, you can see it's a little bit shortened and there's a big opening for the USB. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. You're right. Yeah. So let's just go ahead and take a look at the uh, at the project again this time, so I can just sort of talk about uh, that. So if you were to make this with the B plus, it would most likely have the uh, the Ethernet and the and the double USB ports coming out on this end. So you definitely have to make a cutout there. Um, this though should be the exact same. This doesn't move at all. This is the exact same. Another cool thing is that the, the mounting holes are going to be the exact same spot too. So it's really really easy to get this. If your CAD doesn't crash on you, <laughs> can, but uh, in the side here, you want to know that there's that's where the slide switch is in, and it just turns on like that. And then right here is a is a nice big port opening for the uh, the micro USB. This is the port that's on the PowerBoost 500C. So if I wanted to charge it, the battery was dying, I could just plug this in. If I didn't want to use the battery, I could of course power it through here with a five volt power supply. You could also get um, another screen if you wanted to over here. This supports uh, dual screen, so that's really great. And then, of course, if you want to do audio, you got the audio jack right there. So really cool. That's the project there. Again, machine screws. They, they're number 440 uh, machine screws, which you can get on Amazon or other places. And there's the one single screw that's holding uh, the, the power boost into place. Yeah, it seems to be the so, yeah. uh, number one question that we always get. Where do we get our machine, machine screws? And yeah, let me check out Amazon. Um, yeah. I think the other signs that we also use are the number twos and then yeah, number, number fours. Six. Number six, yeah. Six, two, and four is what I've been using. Yeah. yeah. Cool. All right. If you, uh, if you want to <laughs> if you want to purchase maybe a Raspberry Pi or the Pi TFT, we got a coupon code for you guys. 
That's right, 10% off. That's right. Check it out. Yep. Touch, touch. Pot, touch Pie. Yeah. Expires today at 11.59. That's right. Yeah, with that, um, that's pretty much the show. You know, my apologies for the CAD thing. Yeah, I think it's still It's, it's still, still sitting trying. there. Yeah, it's still trying. <laughs> um, I think yeah. it's safe to just force quit that one. OK. All right, well, I want to close the show out for you guys. So. <laughs> Thanks for watching, guys. <laughs> I appreciate you guys watching. And um, let us know if uh, you have any cool projects. You can, again, want to plug in the Thingiverse groups, you can check that out, thingiverse.com slash Adafruit. Or sure, I think you there. post on uh, Google Plus or Twitter. We'll eventually find it if it's pretty cool. Yeah, we're always, we're always reading and watching. Much more of a watcher than reader, but yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, I guess uh, we'll, we'll end the show with some links for you guys. You be sure to check out the project on the Adafruit Learning System at learn.adafruit.com. You can also check out our other backlog of amazing projects that we've done. Yeah, that's right. Uh, you can get the Cura Profiles, uh, Simplify 3D. Ah, thank you. Which you'll yeah. choose a ton on all of our projects. You can get all those for all of the printers that we sell on the shop. Thank you for that. I completely missed that. It's, we're putting a lot of efforts into, into making sure that we have a, a nice profile for you guys. Since yeah. we carry the printers, we want to have a nice profile for you guys. Yeah, unfortunately, like we tested. said, a lot of the manufacturers are just testing little octopuses um, and statues. Yeah, maybe, so. maybe some test probes and things, but we're really focused on these type of parts, right? Like enclosures and every project that you yeah. see, which is what, like 52 projects a year, we've tested with our profiles. Yeah. They should work. <laughs> yeah, totally, totally. And they'll we'll continue to update them as well. And we're using GitHub this time, so we can easily push out uh, updates and things. And if you want to share yours with us, you can also do that, I suppose, in the in the, uh, in the Thingiverse uh, groups as well. Don't forget, we have or the show and tell forms. also every Wednesday, 7.30. Yeah, that's right. Check it out on plus.google.com, plus symbol Adafruit. Yeah, speaking of wearables, it is uh, Becky's birthday today. So birthday. everybody out there, happy birthday. Say happy birthday to Becky. She is our director of wearable electronics. And uh, you know we wouldn't be here without her, really. So yeah. shout out to you. Yeah. Every Thursday, we have cool, awesome blog posts on 3D printing. Check it out at adafruit.com slash blog. Or I think we got changed to blog.adafruit.com. So oh, we'll have to that update that. Oh, oh yeah. OK. <laughs> Things to do. And you can always follow myself, Pedro, in the Adafruit. Um, we're on Twitter and Instagram. If you want to see what we're working on, like maybe some, some behind the scenes stuff, we're always posting things, uh, fail art, and all sorts of cool oh, yeah. things to watch. Yeah. So, yeah. of cool upcoming projects that you guys can check out, sneak peeks on that if you follow us there. Yeah. And that's it for this week. We're going to get back to uh, printing some more parts. So uh, thank you all for watching. I really appreciate it. It's what keeps us going. Oh, yeah. And yeah, I guess I'll close out the show. Guys, thanks so much for watching. We'll be here next week. And until then, be sure to make, share, repeat. We'll keep on printing, guys. See ya. Bye.